and the manifestation of the Spirit and the demonstration of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Paul says, now concerning, okay, sorry, the local church, all right. <laughs> Let's talk about the local church. Oh, you can talk about it. Let's talk about the local church. This morning, we talked about, just like last week, that when a new convert receives the gospel, we minister the baptism with the Holy Ghost. And I emphasize this towards the end, that usually, if you observe others, you need to observe others. There are some things as a Christian you should not be proud you don't know how to do. Don't be proud. Don't even say it out. That you don't know how to minister the baptism with the Holy Ghost. And I showed us in the morning that some say, well, the apostles. No. Acts 9 was Ananias laying hands on Saul of Tarsus, who was called an apostle to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So that ministry is for us all. Somebody receives the gospel, we minister the baptism with the Holy Ghost. And I said in the morning, I'm going to share it also during the, I mean, as long in the subject and the service, that it's an experience. You don't guess. The baptism with the Holy Ghost is something, somebody beside you should say, oh, this happened to that brother. That happened to that sister. So it's an experience. It's not just an information. It's an experience. Now, having done that, it's also important that as someone has been, let's call it, filled with the Holy Spirit, we see the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he now needs to be brought to the place, which is the church, where the Word of God is taught. Now, I'm going to show you two very important uh, analogies in the Scriptures. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, I've said to you many times that when the writers of the epistles, and so the four Gospels precisely, when they are writing, every detail is important. Now, in Luke's Gospel 8, they said that um, Jesus was preaching the Gospel, verse 1. Then it says the 12. Now, the 12 is a symbolic number of his apostles, his ministers, his associates. Now, notice the next statement. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary Magdalene, are out of whom went seven devils. So, which means that she received a miracle, she was once under the bondage of the enemy, but now she's amongst those that Jesus is teaching and training for the work of the ministry. He mentioned Joanna, the, the wife of uh, Chusa, Herod's servant, or steward, and Susanna, and many others which administered to him of their own substance. So which means something else was happening in their lives. Uh, after, you know, what, what happens today? Somebody gets born again and then receives a miracle we kind of feel that miracle is the big deal. It is a big deal, right? But there's something that is very critical, and that is that brother and that sister who had received the miracle. In this instance, the baptism with the Holy Spirit is also a miracle. was now being established, now being taught and grounded. Now, notice that when Jesus revealed the explanation of the parable of the sower to everybody, uh, to the 12, these folks were part of them. Now, in the same uh, vein, just Jesus now had another miracle, a notable one, which was the, the popular madman of Gadra. Now, the man was obviously in the tomb, very outstanding, a remarkable miracle. But notice something in verse 35. They went out to see what was done. When they now went to see this guy, you know, naturally, uh, and, 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 and I'm not against people giving testimonies. I, I believe it helps people to stir up their faith and all of that. But you see, there's a greater work that usually ignored. In this instance, when they came back, what did they find? They found the man out of whom, verse 35, the devils were cast out or departed sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, and what? In his right mind. And they were afraid. Now, sitting at the feet of Jesus will be used later on for Mary in verse 42 and, uh, 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 no, no, not, not 42 now, Luke 10, Luke's Gospel 10, sorry, verse 38 to 42, where Mary sat at his feet to hear his word. 
Which means that after this guy had received miracles, his life is changed, he has a testimony. The greater testimony there is that he's learning the word. He's sitting with the disciples. He's being taught the word of God. So no matter the experience that a new convert has received, whether it's healing or very vitally, baptism with the Holy Spirit, you need to get the person seated down in the church amongst the saints of God, hearing God's word. It's not good enough to tell the testimony of somebody who has received this and received that. That's good, right? But the job is really about making disciples. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, which is with the healing, the baptism with the Holy Ghost, you now need to sit down and learn the word of God Receive ministry so that you can be established in ministry. Is that clear? So this week, as you go out to get people filled with the Holy Spirit, saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, you must go further to ensure they sit down to learn the word. Make sure that they sit down amongst believers to be discipled and taught the word. Is that clear? Is that clear? So look at that critical element that he's sitting down. People came back. You probably want to hear, you know what? Oh, you know, let's see the guy. And, and then you see him learning the word. Of course, he's taken care of, which means he's, you know, he's well closed and he's in his right mind. The word of God has now started having effect on his life. And that you need to do when you have a new convert who receives Jesus and baptism with the Holy Spirit and miracles. That new convert needs to sit down and learn the word. Is that clear? Praise the Lord. So this week you do that, right? You do that this week. So you must be patient. And I'm going to talk about this next week. Maybe not next week, but after. Many of us need to realize that we should be patient in teaching God's word. Don't go to people to bring them to the service. No. There's a part of that, no doubt, but be patient to teach God's word. So say, what would I be teaching? What have you been listening to? Is it Quran you've been listening to? You teach God's word. That is why you learn the word to act upon it and to teach others. Is that clear? Hallelujah.